Hey guys, let's talk about shoes. Um, the Half Marathon Clinic. Uh, you guys at this point in a Half Marathon Clinic should actually know what type of shoes you need, right? Stability, neutral, motion control, whatever, right? Um, so I won't talk about, a lot about that. I will talk more about some of the changes in the technology in the shoes. I will talk about the difference between winter shoes and trail shoes. But let's start with, with shoes basically. Um, you, know, you know the idea, right? If you need support, you need support. If you don't, you don't. And if you need a lot of support, well, you need a lot of support. But things have changed through the years. I want to get that point made um, uh, right right now. Because there's a lot of changes. What we used to think of as shoes, we used to think diff different, like shoes. When I bought my first pair of shoes, I did the whole gait analysis thing where I had to walk, do a squat, do a, um, a lunge, see if I had balance, um, see if I pronated, under pronated, over pronated. And apparently at that point, I really over pronated. So I needed a, a, I needed a shoe. A certain shoe was called the motion control shoe. Uh, the one I bought was by Mizuno called, uh, it's called Mondo Control. So you, that sort of says it all in one word. So that, that sort of was where I started. And then I went to like stability shoes as well because I needed the support. I was told I needed the support at that time. And I just uh, remember uh, probably about almost two decades ago, there was an article in Runner's World magazine. And it debated whether all these stability and motion control shoes caused more injuries than they cured. And I remember that, like almost like the next day that I walked into the running room where we used to have like four or five or maybe six motion control shoes and we had a lot of stability shoes. That had changed. We had like maybe two stability or motion control shoes. The stability shoes had shrunk and we had way more neutral shoes that just worked with your feet. The interesting thing was some of the shoes that we actually had were, that were stability shoes, like I'm gonna say the men's or the A6 Nimbus, this puppy here. It was actually called at one time a stability shoe. Now it's just called a cushioning shoe, a neutral cushioning shoe, or yeah, both mean the same thing. Now it's not, now it's neutral cushioning, but you know what secret? It's still got some stability in it, but we'll talk about that in a second. So now things have changed. Things have changed. There's been a huge shift two de decades later where um, a lot of physiotherapists and stuff were actually really leaning away from having uh, motion control shoes and stability shoes. Uh, I don't know if they said because it hurt your feet or bothered you or anything, but what we've learned through the years is it's just not about our feet, right? It's about our knees and about everything else. So yes, first of all, shoes. Why do we need shoes? I'm not gonna talk about that. I'll talk about this after this recording if you guys want me to. But um, cushioning we needed. But did we need stability? Did we need that much motion control? And I'm gonna say for some people, yes. Some people, it's, it's like uh, orthotics or something like that, right? So you actually need that, that type of uh, support. But for most of us, it's all about the stride of how we run, right? What our feet do. And I, I don't know if I mentioned this, but or told you guys this, but the, the thing about running, we always think running, a lot of people think, running, running is from heel to toe, right? That's, that's the way. Um, I'm not gonna go into midfoot, uh, toe strike, whatever, but that's the way people thought we run. But we don't, we don't do that. What a lot of you guys will notice, this part of the shoe usually wears out really quickly. People come to the store and say, hey, I underpronate because I wear that part out. Guess what, if you run, that's where you're gonna wear out all the time. Uh, what what happens is the way you run, and this if you ever watch a track meet and see people run in track shoes, you'll notice this too. It's not that, it's outside, inside, toe. It, that's the natural stride. It's under pronating, it's under pronating a little bit. Oh, I, I'm gonna say supinating, sounds better. And then pronating and push off your toe. So pronation and supination is pretty much normal for a normal runner, right? Some of us don't do that. Some don't make the transition. That way we need some support or corrective support, I'm gonna say or maybe just guidance. So what's happened is, I think Brooks is one of the first shoes that did that. this. I said, wait a minute, do we need all that support? Because the whole point is just to push off your toe in your run. Not the inside of your toe, not the outside of your toe, but dead on. So what do we do? Do we need that big honking piece of plastic that most shoes have now, uh, like the New Balance? They've got this little bit of here that forces you, so you, there's no way you're gonna pronate, right? Well, that's not, really what you want because we all naturally pronate. When we walk, run, we pronate. It's natural. If somebody comes to the bar and say, hey baby, I pronate, big deal, everybody pronates. Um, so what happened with uh, Brooks, I'm gonna grab a shoe I don't normally grab. There's a Brooks shoe called the Brooks Glycerin. This puppy here. It's probably one of my favorite shoes ever. Lots of cushioning, but it didn't come with support, right? It, it, it was just a cushioning shoe. It just worked with your feet. Whatever your feet want to do, it did. It's for people that don't pronate, don't need extra help. They just naturally run properly. Well, what Brooks has done is they've taken a shoe. I can't actually see the glycerin right now, so I'll grab, I'll grab the adrenaline. Oh, there's glycerin. What they've done is they said, okay, instead of forcing the feet, we're going to guide the feet. 
We're almost going to make it like the guide rails on a uh, bowling lane. I don't really like that analogy, but I can't think of another one right now. And we're going to do bumpers on both sides of the shoe. So if you under pronate, we'll help you guide your feet to push off your toe. If you really over pronate and wouldn't normally run on the side of your foot, it's going to guide you to push off your toe. So on the outside of the foot, they've got guide rails on this part. And on this side, they've got guide rails on this part. So instead of forcing your feet, it just guides your feet naturally and then you push off your toe. So they did this and they've actually done this to a lot of their shoes. But I think the neatest thing about this, this used to be actually the stability shoe they used to have was called the Transcend. They dropped that name, just said glycerin. It's got the baby, nice soft cushioning, which I really love. And then just guides your feet. Cool. They've actually got a couple of shoes doing that now. The Adrenaline is another one. Uh, they've got another one called the Launch that does that. I think they're going to do that. And they've even done with their motion control shoe, which you would think is really weird. But motion control was actually built to force your feet. But what they've done is they've taken out that support. Uh, it's a stiffer shoe for sure. It won't move a lot. It's got, it's got the sort of, we call it the last straight last. So it's almost, doesn't have a curve to it. It's almost straight up and down. And it's got the guide rails just to guide your feet. Bonus and lots of cushioning too, which is kind of cool. So they've done that. So they did that, guides your feet. So other shoes are starting to do this a lot. Um, Brooke, um, Saucony's done that. I'll grab their, this used to be called, we used, they used to have a show, shoe called the Hurricane. Uh, they dropped that, they brought in this, it's called the Tempest. When I first heard it, it was called the Tempest. So I thought maybe Shakespearean, but no, some of you guys won't get that. Anyway, what they've done, again, if they've, they changed the cushioning in the shoe to add more stability, and then again, it just guides the feet. Uh, what they've done is really neat with the cushioning is you don't, most cushioning you just sit on top of. Well, they made the cushioning so you sink down a little bit into it. So you get a little support from that, a little stability. It's actually, if you've never tried to win these shoes, they've actually done it there, I think, with the ride as well. And it's, it's, it's nice. So again, guiding your feet rather than forcing your feet. Different shoes, different technologies. Um, Hoka. Hoka. Again, I don't know why we call these stability shoes anymore because they're really not. Um, I can't see the Hoka right away. There it is, the Rahi. Again, uh, Hoka is known for their cushioning, right? And also the other thing they're known for, there's a thing called the midfoot rocker, the middle of the shoe. Uh, if you run in these, you're going to notice there's really right away, even if you walk in them. A lot of people feel like they roll you backwards. They actually roll you forwards, propel you forwards. Because running is not a straight up thing. It's, it's a series of stops and starts. Uh, if anybody tells you if you land midfoot, you're not stopping, guess what? There's always friction. When you land on your feet, there's friction. Unless you're running in zero gravity, that's happening. But I love that they say it's, it's a series of stops and starts, so they try to promote like you're running. What they say is like running down um, or biking down a side of a mountain on a mountain bike. You're just moving. So that's that's close as you're going to get, which I love these shoes. But their cushioning's amazing. Their stability is called a J-plate on the bottom. And it just, again, guides your feet. Guides your feet to push off the toe. So another, another shoe, different technology. They've taken up the clue. So great, great shoe. Um, again, if you need really a lot of stability, I'm not going to say not to go to stability shoe, but I think more and more what's happening, I think it's it's going this way. So uh, just, yeah, there's some people that need that. So maybe there will always be one shoe that does that. Um, again, Nimbus, again, they've taken out the big honking piece of support on the bottom. Guide your feet. Um, ha, a shoe. It's called On. The brand is called On. Uh, neat thing, Hoka is designed by ultra marathoners who live in the French Alps. Ons are designed by an ultra marathoner and triathlete that lives in the Swiss Alps. If you watch the Olympics from Tokyo, most of their track stars were wearing, all their track stars were wearing on footwear. So on's done an interesting thing. If you don't know about these shoes, is uh, again, invented by a triathlete. I think he won like a thousand dollars or something in a race. He decided to invest it, invest it and try to build running shoes for him. So what they did was they, they took a shoe, they put, um, they cut up a garden hose and put it at the bottom of the shoe and that's what they got pods and now he's like rich so hey just come up with something like that you'd be rich too anyhow so what he's what they've got is pods on the bottom these things are supposed to collapse i'm not going to try i'm not schwarzenegger i can't do that but when you land on them they collapse so it's like landing on a cloud and then you're pushing off a hard surface which is really cool but the neat thing about the pods they can do anything they want with these things they can harden they can soften whatever they want to do so this is this is what they call it their stability shoe uh cloud flyer and what it does is they've hardened where they need to soften where they need to so when you actually run you're naturally guiding guiding your way so yay 
interesting thing. And these things are really, um, I'm gonna, not odd, but weird. I used to, I, I'm gonna talk about traction in a few seconds. I didn't think these had any traction at all, but um, a few years ago when I had a pair of these, I, mine was called the Cloud Swift, which is a neutral shoe. Remember when I said I started in motion control shoes? I now run in neutral. I actually run almost everything. I just like shoes. But anyhow, um, these things were like the best thing in the world. I was running up ice. My friends in traction aids were slipping. I don't know if it's because of the compression that you get more of a grip, but that made all the difference in the world. So neat. And most probably one of the most natural running shoes I've ever had. It's like you don't realize you have shoes on your feet. So if you have a chance, try the ones. And I'm not going to say the thing that, uh, um, you know, you know the thing where somebody says this shoe's your best shoe, you have to buy the shoe. Just because it's your best friend's shoe doesn't mean it's the best shoe for you. That's, that's, we hear that a lot. My friend says I should try these. Well, maybe it's not the shoe. Um, again, Polk is like our nurse's shoe. So I'm sure if I walked into the hospital here in St. Albert, um, every nurse is going to be wearing ho Hoka, except for maybe one or two who came in and said, it's not the shoe for me. So now we've talked about shoes. Let's talk about winter shoes and what that means. Uh, trail shoes, can you use trail shoes in wintertime? You can use any shoe in wintertime. I used to be the guy that used to say, you can run it in street shoes all winter long in most cities. Um, just be careful, watch for the black ice. Uh, most trails will have some grass on the sides of them, so you can run on that. Look for spots where there is no ice. And just be careful, shorten your stride, make sure you have a good grip because most shoes have a track, um, a tra tread of some sort. And then I'm gonna say this out loud. I know my boss doesn't like me saying this, but I've had a really bad fall. It's gonna be three years this November. And um, I'm just gonna say it took me out of running for, for a year and it was really kind of traumatic. But ever since I've worn traction, it was just a stupid day. And I'm gonna tell a story. I went for a run, um, it was a slippery day. It took a drive to a place called Kinsman Source Center. Normally it takes me, 30 minutes, it took me an hour just because it's so icy and there's tra there's cars and ditches and stuff. I get down there, I've got to go for my run. I've got to get that run in. And I grab my shoe, I have my shoes on, I've got actually the Rahi on. And um, I had traction aids in the back seat of my car. I could have put them on, I didn't bother. And I was slippery, I was trying to make it up this hill to Queen Elizabeth Park. I was sliding all over the place, but I figured, okay, there's an off-road trail, I'll take that. I took two steps, I was on my back. So again, ever since then, I say, why take the chance? Um, traction aids, winter shoes, you got lots of options. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to say, guys, it's an option uh, for you guys in Vancouver. Remember, it can get slippery in the rain. So, and you do have, I've, I've been in Vancouver. I live in Vancouver. You guys do get snow and it does freeze. So I'm going to say, just be careful. There's different types of trip winter shoes too that might work better in other different towns. So what you're looking for in a winter shoe, again, trail shoe, say something like, something like, um, where is Peregrine? It's on here somewhere. The Peregrine 12. So this is a trail shoe made by Saucony. It's a trail shoe. It's got traction on the bottoms, right? It's got the lugs. But the difference is going to be the compound that they make the, the, the rubber out of. That's going to be the biggest difference. So this will give you some traction on snow and ice, but not a lot. It's built for rocks, dirt, mud, not necessarily. They have to have a shoe that's act actually, they've got three or four shoes. They've got uh, this shoe for just regular trail running. They've got one designed for running when it is muddy and wet and lots of water. Like, sort of like mountain bikes. Mountain bikes, if you do different track, different terrain, they have different tires, right? So, so this is for terrain. They've got ones that are built for water that have holes in them so the water drains. And then they have winter shoes, which have a different compound in them, but they also have one more thing. And this is a Peregrine 12 GTX. So same shoe. The grip is a lot of different, looks a bit diff different. It's got a different compound. It grips the ice and snow better. So more traction. And also it's got Gore-Tex to keep you dry and warm. So that's the biggest, other big difference. The thing to remember about Gore-Tex and any kind of material that does that, it might fit a little bit tighter. It doesn't have as much give as regular shoes do. So make sure these things fit. Make sure when you try them on, you're gonna wear the socks that you normally would run in in winter time and then try these on. Do not come into the store and say, I, I don't normally wear these socks. We do have try-on socks, but come when you come to buy a pair of shoes, wear the shoes, socks you're gonna buy, run in those shoes, right? Maybe throw them in the car just randomly and just remember they're there. Because um, we get that a lot. We get, we get that all year long is like, I don't normally wear these socks. Well. The shoe's gonna, not going to fit the same if you've got a thicker sock or a thinner sock, right? Um, I'm going to talk maybe quickly about winter socks at some point in this talk. But anyway, Gore-Tex is great. There's different different materials some companies use. The other thing about trail shoes and off-road trails and, and winter shoes, tra um, support. Again, if you're running off-road, where you really need the support, where you need the, really need the guiding is on asphalt and concrete and hard surfaces. When you're running off-road, 
Go on neutral shoe all the way. You don't need that. It's 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 better. It's it's better. I'm gonna say running on trails is better. Period. But yeah, I don't think there's actually a trail shoe. There probably is. There is actually. I'm gonna see. I'm lying. There is one shoe that has support in it. Um, but it's rare. Um, I've, I've never really. I've never. I again. I used to be a stability guy. Now I wear neutral shoes. But sometimes I need the support, and I feel I need it. But if I'm out road, just a regular shoe with no support in it. Every shoe has a little bit of support, but not much. Anyhow, so this is this is this is this is Asics version of a trail shoe or a winter shoe. I don't like the. I'm, I'm going to say this out loud. I'm not a big fan of them taking a shoe, and then just slapping traction on it. Uh, Asics isn't bad, but there's other other brands that have done that. They'll take one of one of the best shoes ever. They'll throw traction on the bottom of it without changing anything else in the shoe, and it just does not work. Um, it just it's it's not the same. So. If you're gonna buy a shoe for winter for trails, buy one specifically for that. That's special. Like, um, Ace or Brooks. Brooks has got a trail shoe. It's called. It's called the. We don't have one. We do the Cascadia. So again, built for trail, not for winter. Can you use it in winter? Sure, you can use any shoe you want. You can run in a pair of Oxfords if you want. But will it work as well? Anyhow, so this is this is A6. It does have um, guiding, not a little bit of support. Actually, it does have support. It's got support in it, but it's uh, it's a winter. It's more. I'm gonna say it's more for like again water. If you're running in Vancouver and you need something with a little traction, the grip, fine. For ice, I don't think this would work as well. What I say, look for if you're looking for a winter shoe. I think the only winter shoe we have up here right now is a Saucony, and again, you got that grip. So make sure you look for that. Make for a specific winter grip, not just the GTX, not just just the trail shoe. Make sure it's got that grip. That's probably the biggest difference. Now. We've talked about that. We've talked about shoes. We've talked about trail shoes versus everyday shoes. And again, it's important to have that traction. Now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make you dizzy by walking across the store a little bit. Cause I'm a big, after, la after last winter, uh, if you're from Edmonton, you know what I'm talking about. Last year we had a plethora of days where we had freezing rain and then days it would freeze or melt during the day, freeze overnight. You'd go for a run the next morning and you're on glare ice. Um, you didn't even want to drive anywhere, even if you had winter tires, it was that bad. And winter tires don't really work on black ice, right? So anyway, and all seasons, uh, all seasons are like cross-training shoes. They sort of work, but not, not really. So traction aids, we've got a lot of them. And there's different ones I'm going to say for different things. And I'm going to say there's some I think are better than others. I used to, Yak Tracks, I used to talk people out of buying Yak Tracks. This sounds really bad me saying that. But I always thought they, they uh, if you've seen a Yak Track, I'll just show the picture here. They have springs on them. And uh, I've heard I've heard that the springs will eventually break off, but I bought I started wearing mine at the start of last winter, and I wore mine throughout the winter. Yes, by the end of the winter, these things wore out. Um, the springs wore off, but and and broke, and the pins oh, the pins too. There's pins on the bottom as well. They broke off, but that was towards the spring when most of the snow had melted and I was running on asphalt. So I, you have to buy maybe every year, but that's fine if you're wearing them for five or six months. What the heck? You can afford the 50 bucks, right? Well, maybe not. But anyhow, I, I love these things. The thing I like most about them too are they're secure on your feet. They have a good, good secure system on your feet. They're not gonna fall off, which is a problem with some of them. I don't know if we've got, we kinda do, we kinda do. Um, there's these things. I don't know if you've seen these. Again, there's these they are better than the ones we used to have. We used to have, they were just like galoshes and they would fit on your shoe. And I remember last, one, last time I wore mine, I was running and all of a sudden I can feel one foot slipping a little bit more than the other. And I looked down, well, I, I, I lost one of the, one of the, the traction aids. That's, I like that word, traction aids. And um, I keep running and I see another one. Somebody else lost one, it was the right one, so I just grabbed that one. It's actually the right size. So they weren't the best. They were good for a while. If you put them on properly, they're great. You had to really secure them. You had to make sure they're the right size. These are a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna say what I like about them is they've got straps on them with um, with um, yeah track with um, yeah and they fit perfectly. You can force them to fit you, right? So that I think the Velcro is actually works really well. Um, again, it, it's personal choice, but I don't mind these. I still like the Actrax better. Uh, there's other ones that are really heavy duty. These are built more for boots. Um, I I don't think I'd use these for for running. But other things, I'm gonna show you this one. Um, again, we used to do this before we had traction aids. Uh, we would, there's usually somebody in our store that is an expert at this. They would just grab uh, screws, metal screws from um, Canadian Tire and just put uh, them on the bottom of our shoes. There's a real problem with that though. You have to know what you're doing with some shoes. Um, 
Nike, we don't sell Nike anymore, but they were they were really a challenge because Nike has an air pocket on the bottom, right? And if you put the screw in the wrong spot, you would pop a hole in the air pocket, which was fine. But after you took the screws out, every time you took a step, you'd hear the whoosh, 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 whoosh. So it takes <coughs> it defeats the purpose of having that shoe. And other shoes have gel and stuff, so you don't want to puncture those pockets either. So you have to really know what you're doing. But these things come with, um, I don't know if you can see these in the baggie, but um, yeah, screws, just metal screws. So you just put these in the bottom of your shoes, usually around the periphery, around the outside. I usually put, yeah, I usually put more in the front than on the heel. Watch where you put them. And they work fine too. Again, they will wear out though. Once you start running on concrete and asphalt, they will wear down. And the only thing, I, other thing I found about the screws, okay, the pointy part goes up. The pointy part goes up, not down. A lot of people did that and that didn't really work. It's the, the again, I'll bring these out. You want the, the, the head of the screw to actually be on the bottom of the shoe. And that's what provides the traction. Problem with it, I found, is if they happen to sand the trail that you're running on, that, can you see that? Where is it? There it is, there it is. Um, not really in focus, but oh well. The screw will actually fill up with snow or with, with uh, sand, so you lose that traction. So that's that's sort of the downside to it. It does work. They do work. We've worn them forever before we had actual traction aids, before the roads were paved, and um, they work. So that's that's an option. But yeah, traction aids. I'm going to say when it gets really bad, when it gets really icy, the winter shoes, the winter specific shoes work. But I'm going to say um, traction aids help better. Um, and just be careful because winter is winter is winter. It's a danger. You don't really have this problem in the summer, right? It's slipping on frozen ice. Um, I'm going to say this part of the year when it's the shoulder season, slippery is um, wet leaves. Again, I, I fall a lot. I fell, okay, two decades ago and fractured a lower left fibula, which is my ankle. And um, it was just running on, on leaves. And I just took off and ran on an off-road trail. Fell. I thought I heard... Um, a branch or a root break underneath me it wasn't that it was you know what so yeah so just be careful with that make sure you got secure uh, traction um make sure you're watching what you're doing um the other thing we're not going to talk much about biomechanics well maybe we will in this clinic but when you run make sure you get your heads up you're looking straight ahead not down um look where you want to go not where you don't want to go if you bike mountain bike ski cross-country ski you know what happens when you look at your feet right you crash so don't do that so that, that's that, that's the traction aids. And also there's different types. These are a little more aggressive. We just got these from, um, called Life Sports Gear. Uh, I don't know if you can see that picture, but a little more aggressive. I'm gonna say these are probably more for trail, but um, if you really want something a lot that you're definitely not gonna slip, again, it's worth the money. I'm just gonna say, you just spent 200 bucks on a pair of shoes. Do you wanna throw traction aids? And also if you don't wanna to go to a winter shoe, that's an option as well too, right? If you love your shoes, just get traction aids. Um, again, don't worry about getting cold in winter either. Um, like I said, I think, I don't know if I said it in this thing or not, but the when you go for your run, the first day it's cold, like we did that yesterday. Um, what we notice right away is our hands get cold, right? Our hands, some people, their feet, uh, some women, I'm going to say they're bahookies. Um, it's just, it's, it's just happens when it, you hit the cold and it's like minus 20, minus 25. What happens is all your bodily fluids protect your vital organs right so they rush away from your capillaries and your hands yeah your feet maybe um various body parts get cold so expect that when you go outside in the cold expect to, those parts to get cold um don't overdress because of that because eventually everything warms up and your hands will warm up as well so trust in that um i'm not going to talk clothing today i'll do that next week but gloves um i like mitts more than gloves uh, there's some gloves that have like mitt combo, mitt glove combo. I haven't found those really work really well, but you know, if you want to spend the money. Um, but I like, if it's really cold, there's some gloves I love, but I always think I used to double glove and every so often your shoe would get untied and you'd have to retie it. So you take your glove, hands out of the glove and you're sweating, you're hot, your, your hands are moist and not feeling, uh, not really perfect. You tie up your shoe, try to put your hands, moist, wet hands back into that glove. Uh, it's not going to work. So that's why you don't want to over sweat. You want you want to be comfortable, not not overheated, right? So yeah, we'll talk about gloves and stuff next week, because maybe it's well. Okay, I know it's snowing in Chicago or in Montana, Montana. It's snowing in Winnipeg and Manitoba and Saskatchewan right now. It's snowing in Calgary yesterday. So yeah, winter is coming. Surprise! Um, this is where everybody forgets how to drive. So do you want a winter specific sock? That's that's why I'm over here. Do you need winter specific socks? I'm going to say 
Maybe. I, I've always worn forever. I've just worn our regular everyday running room double layer socks and they were fine. The problem is most, if you're wearing your everyday shoes, mesh on top, right? So the wind, wind chill gets in there, it gets cold. If you thought have Gore-Tex on, that's not going to happen because Gore-Tex is built to prevent that. So don't overthink the socks. Again, what socks did you wear when you bought those shoes? Still wear those socks. Um, but if you want to go winter socks, we do have winter specific socks. Just remember, they're not really that much thicker than our double layer. They're really not. This is just the material they're made out of. They're a little bit, uh, yeah. So they're built exactly for winter. Um, but again, I don't overthink that part. We have waterproof socks too that nobody's really, I don't understand them. Um, we'll talk more that's when we talk clothing but remember notice know the difference between waterproof and water resistant waterproof is means you're gonna stay dry no matter what which if you live on the west or east coast if you've ever gone fishing with the commercial fishermen and you've seen what they wear right the the greens the slicks um, they're built to keep you absolutely dry but the problem is once it gets warm out once you start working and you oh, potty heats up you're gonna start sweating like crazy. So waterproof is not the best for us. You want water resistance, so you're not gonna get wet right away. If you're running, if you're moving, you're not gonna get wet. If you're standing underneath a water spout, yes, you're gonna get wet. So that, that's the thing. You don't, waterproof, um, if you really need these, I don't really think so. These say, say they're breathable, so I'm gonna say that's probably a bonus. But again, I don't really overthink the socks. Um, I, maybe it's just me, but um, if you need winter socks, I'm gonna say it's up to you. If you got, Cortex, no, don't worry about it. So anyhow, that's shoes, that's socks, that's traction. Uh, time for questions, guys. Just ask me anything. I hope you saved up a lot of questions. And yeah, come shop for shoes. Think about your shoes. Um, if you want to talk about how to figure out whether you need pronation or not, we can do that after this, this place. Anyhow, your turn.